Hello everyone. Music is incredibly good for us. Countless scientific studies prove how much learning music can increase your IQ and can improve your chances of academic and social success. 90% of people all over the world would like to learn an instrument, would like to play music. And 95% of parents want their children to study music. So with that in mind, I am sure that everyone here plays music every day, right? No? Yes, I heard one voice, yes. So I guess most of us are part of the 85%. The 85% of children all over the world who quit music before the age of 15. And the paradox is that most of us assume, it's like, well, that's the way it is, I'm not gifted with music, I would love to play an instrument, but I'm simply not a musician. That is not how it should be. In the first years of learning music, it's like there were two kinds of music. There was the fun music that we listen to every day, and there was the, the boring music that we had to learn. And it was so difficult, it was so long, it was so expensive. We had to repeat and repeat and repeat and we made so many mistakes. And ultimately, we began to dislike music. And by disliking music, our teacher said, Yes, you're suffering now, but pleasure will come later, maybe in a few years. Really? <laughs> in a few years, I'm eight? <laughs> Fortunately, there is a far more enjoyable way to learn music. Think for a moment about how to learn your own language. Did we start by reading? No. Did we start by grammatical rules and complex words? Of course not. We started by listening and imitating. Because we all have this natural ability to hear a continuous flow of sounds and to recognize some patterns. At, at first it's some simple patterns like syllables and words. And then it's more complex patterns like groups of words. And after a few months, we can recognize, understand, and build our own sentences. And it feels natural, it feels good. Then comes the reading, the, the reading and the writing, not before. So why should music learning be any different from learning our own language? Five years ago, I had one of the most amazing encounters of my life. I met with one of the most outstanding music teachers in the world. His name is Vincent Chantrier. And I met him because I wanted to improve my own music compositions. When I first met Vincent, he told me, we will not focus on your musical compositions at first, because you are not yet ready. At first, we need to focus on the syllables, the fundamentals of music. We will focus on your musical ear, on your musical brain, on the way you analyze sound, on the way you proceed music into your mind. Because the better your ear, the better you can play and then create music. So Vincent started to test me with some ear exercises. Sometimes I was good, but sometimes I was awful. <laughs> but he was always giving me some tips to move to the next level. And after 10 lessons, I felt like 
I had made more progress in two months with Vincent than I had made in 15 years of learning music before. It was like if, for the very first time, I could be able to enter the world of musicians, the exclusive club of musicians. It's like if all the musicians of the planet, of the world, would have the, the, their specific language, their specific world, you know, their specific club. And I wanted to be part of that. I wanted to enter the club, but until then I was not invited, I could not enter. There was a barrier between musicians and myself. And thanks to Vincent, in a very short amount of time, I was able to come into the club. I was able to understand the language of music. It was like if I had entered a new world where music is more intense, where music was my life. And it was so good, it was so beautiful to do that. Now think about it. I was lucky because I met Vincent. But how many people in the world wouldn't have this chance, this opportunity? For example, in this room, who think is not part of the club of musicians? Unfortunately, probably everybody. And who would like to enter this beautiful club where music is more intense for you every day? Fortunately, everybody too. So I asked Vincent, is it possible? Can you make anyone understand music the way you did it for me? He answered yes. So we started working together. We wanted to transform Vincent's theory into something that everyone would like to access. But if we wanted to make this a reality, we had to be very ambitious. We had to make music learning more effective, more engaging, and more enjoyable. We had to deal with all the profiles of musicians, from the beginner to the expert musician, whatever their music styles. And it had to be complementary to what is being done in music schools and conservatories. So for one year and a half, Vincent and I worked together to build a framework out of his theories. His first lesson was that music is divided into seven dimensions. Rhythm, specialization, harmony, melody, dynamics, timbre, and forms. But this is already a big deal. Because when you start music, it's like if it's very difficult to understand, to perceive it. You know, it's like if you had to explore a giant ocean, you wouldn't even know where to begin. But if I tell you that music is not unlimited, that it is not a giant ocean, if I tell you that music is more about seven lakes, then you can figure out a way to discover and explore the realm of music. You can go, for example, to the first lake, then go to the second, go to the third, go back to the first, and so on. With the seven dimension framework that Vincent has set up, we can all quickly focus on one or several dimensions of music. And it gives us an angle of listening. Music is no more unlimited and unfathomable. Even if we are not very precise at first, we can quickly perceive it, handle it, and become confident in the process of learning. The second lesson of Vincent was about the perception of music, the different levels of perception. And in Vincent's theory, there are four levels of perception of music. It's called the SEMA model, for S-E-M-A. You've got the sensation, the emotion, the memory, and the analysis. So very briefly, sensation is when I hear a sound. I can quickly focus on one, on one note or the other, etc. There is kind of a plasticity that you can have when you hear. And you can develop it, of course. 
the emotion. Each sound you have has an emotional impact on you. And what's very magic in music is that every music element has its own emotional signature that you can try to understand, that you can try to recognize. Memory, we have all heard, I mean, we have all already memorized a sound. You know how it is to memorize a melody, for example. But if you have to memorize a 30 minute piece of music, it's gonna be much harder. So you can develop your perception of music through theory. And the last one is analysis. This is the formalization of music through words, signs, and figures. It's solfeggio, it's a score, you know? And what's really amazing with the SEMA model is that usually when you go in a music school or with a music teacher, you may start by the memory and the analysis. In Vincent's theory, it is the other way around. We start by the sensation and the emotion before consolidating the notion of music through memory and analysis. So for one and a half years, we worked on Vincent's framework. We, we took you know, the seven dimension fr framework. We took the four, uh, the four th uh, axes of perception of music and we built hundreds of ear exercises. And those ear exercises went from the beginner to the expert level of musician so that everyone could enter music. Even professional musicians could actually work onto their ear again. So now we're going to take an example. We're going to play a little bit. So I will show you our first exercise, which is the, the easiest exercise that we have done. I should go there. So <laughs> So the first exercise I wanted to show you in very comfortable conditions crosses the two dimensions of spatialization and sensation. What you're going to hear is always the same first note. And what what you what you have to say is if the second note is higher or lower. So now it's your turn to play. First note. What was it? High. Great. First note, again the same. Low. Yes, it's the first exercise. It's very easy. Low. Yes. But with this exercise, what you figure out is that you can become confident in the process of hearing, in the process of focusing on a special musical element. Okay, and understand. So now we're gonna finish the exercise very quickly. Low again. And the last one, it's your turn. Hi, great. So you didn't make any fault. Congratulations, you have three stars. Now we're gonna move to a more advanced exercise it crosses emotion and harmony. So we skipped 200 or 300 exercises to go there. So if you don't succeed, it's okay, don't worry. But what you have to, what you have to know is that anyway, if you do all the path, you're gonna make it. So this is about major and minor. And I will make you listen a major chord. For those who have seen some movies recently, you know it's the I you are likely to hear some major in the happy moments of the movies. You know when the hero wins the war or the game or anything. And the minor is the opposite. You hear it in sad moments. For example, when the little girl is crying because she's sad. You know. So now. When you succeed this exercise, you will never see the same movies, uh, the movies in the same way. You know what I mean? So this is emotion and harmony. Now we're gonna move to one last exercise, which is way more advanced. It's for confirmed musicians. So we go in the advanced world, and it's about micro melody. It crosses melody, of course and memory. So 
you have like a keyboard, okay, like a piano keyboard. Everybody knows it. F, G, A, B, C. And what you have to do is replay the melody by ear. So you can understand that if you do this exercise, you will be able to take any melody in the world of music that you can hear, and you can know which notes are played, which makes things much easier when you have to take an instrument for the first time. So let's try it. Any musician in the room? You see? Anyone knows? No? Let's hear it again. Okay, I do it alone. That's that was for the demo. So now I hope that you understand how. Of course, I know that it was a more advanced exercise, but our bet is that you can start at a very low level of musicianship and go to this exercise very progressively. And if you can do this exercise, you will be able to to start music and to get more pleasure out of listening and playing. Okay, it's a more natural way of uh, learning an instrument, of learning music, of approaching music through a pleasurable approach. So this is the potential of our musical ear. And what I want to remember from this presentation is three things. First, you do not have to suffer for 10 years before having fun in music, before becoming a musician inside of you. Secondly, you can start now. You don't have to wait, and it's never too late. And third, music must always remain a pleasure and a field of emotions. Thank you very much.